High Point is not a big city. It's got around 107, 108,000 people, but twice a year, the population of this city almost doubles. Meet Palais Bo, a digital nomad from Denmark on an epic journey around the world. My name is Palais Bo, and I'm a longtime radio producer. And in July 2016, I set out on a quest to visit every country in the world. In this podcast, I'm taking you along on my journey. This is the Radio Vagabond Podcast. For some reason, this small city has become the furniture capital of the world. And right now, I'm going to talk to a guy who's responsible for the High Point market. Uh, his name is Tom, and I'm meeting him in here in... <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's called the Radio Building, and it's on the seventh floor on Main Street here in High Point. Even though the next High Point market is only a few weeks away, the CEO, Tom Conley, took the time to see me. When I got there, I asked him if he was up to a challenge. And when he said yes, I said, please describe High Point without mentioning the word furniture. Being the top guy of High Point Furniture Market, I thought that would be difficult for him. Well, it is a city. It's very clearly a city. It's the number two city in Guilford County. Guilford County, North Carolina, uh, has a hundred different counties, and we're not the capital. We're sort of the the uh, second city. I grew up in Chicago, so I'm used to that second city syndrome, quite frankly. Um, and uh, High Point is indeed a city. It, it, it has boundaries, about 107,000 people. But uh, twice a year, it becomes a real state of mind because we bring in between 75 and 80. You're talking about furniture already. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I haven't said furniture yet. Uh, we bring in 75 to 80,000 people who converge on this, uh, on, this, on this town and really transform it. Mm. Yeah, and the, the, being the second city, it, it reminds me a lot about where I grew up and stayed the mo most of my life, uh, a place in Denmark called Randers, and uh, it's got in the city around 60 or 70,000, but in the whole uh, area around 100,000, so that reminds me a little bit about it. And then uh, 20 to 30 minutes away, we have the second biggest city in Denmark uh, called Aarhus, which has maybe 300,000. So it sort of reminds me of this area with the uh, High Point and Greensboro. Yes, very, very much so. And yeah. we're always the little brother. Yes, we are the little brother. In fact, you are here on a day when a lot of the residents are going to uh, the uh, the Greensboro city, or the Greensboro community, uh, uh, sorry, the, the uh, Greensboro County, rather, Board of Commissioners is hearing this afternoon public opinion on High Point's desire to uh, rejuvenate the downtown area. They, yeah, yeah, I heard yeah, about that. Yeah. What, what's what's going to happen yeah. with the downtown? So the proposal is to take a rather large chunk of space that has been declining over the years, as many uh, downtown areas have. And probably I should I should step back. Um, you know, High Point is sort of the quintessential American mill city, if you will. Mm -hmm. We were in the uh, and here it is the furniture business. We were also in the mm -hmm. the textile business, and the families that that uh, controlled High Point uh, became very very wealthy. It was a basically a two class town. The wealthy mill owners and the, the managers, and then excuse me, and then the the uh, workers. And, and so that worked really well for a long time. Both of those industries moved offshore. Uh, the city has, has, has suffered as a result. We're not unique. There are a lot of American cities like that. But um, we've, we've really struggled then to figure out what our identity is. I mean, thank goodness that we have this trade show twice a year, and we have a great university in town. And those are the two things that have really kept this town going. So now we're trying to do this revitalization effort. And the revitalization effort includes a, a baseball stadium and a, a, a children's park a children's museum, um, an event center, and uh, hotel and restaurants and bars. And, and it's really an effort to revitalize the downtown area. That 
involves a, a lot of governmental bodies. North Carolina is one of those states. It's kind of, I think, unique to the American scene. I don't know how it is in Europe or the rest of the world, but we have states that allow what they call home rule, where the state has, or where the, the city has a fair amount of power mm -hmm. vis-a-vis -vis a non-home rule state. North Carolina is a non-home rule state. So the cities can't do a whole lot without getting approval from the county and from the state. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we have to go through this, this process and we're going to uh, uh, have the county commissioners are going to hold a hearing tonight about this downtown revitalization. And so it's, it's been a cause for some controversy. Um, you know, people are concerned bond issues have to be, have to be gone through and, and we're betting on the, the, on the, the future. So, uh, it, it's an, an interesting time in the high point right before our market starts. So yeah. this episode is brought to you in part by hotels 25.com. It's a website that helps you find the best prices on hotels and guest houses and hostels around the world in one simple search hotels 25.com. It's best price guaranteed. Let's get to it. Uh, this is the furniture capital of the world. How in God's name did it become that? Well, it's kind of interesting. Um, many years ago, and this market's been around for over 100 years. I think we're in our 108th year. Um, many years ago, the folks that were doing all of the buying were basically in northern cities, the big department stores. Uh, Michigan was a good source for furniture. Michigan has a lot of, of trees and a lot of manufacturing. Um, and as the uh, manufacturers of, of specifically home furnishings, not so much the, the furnishings that were made for offices and for hotels, um, as, as they looked for uh, cheaper sources of labor and cheaper sources of material, North Carolina became, and Virginia, those two states, became a real good targets. So uh, a lot of the factories moved down here. Uh, so then the buyers uh, would come and they would actually ride the train across North Carolina and, and go on buses and they would visit the various factories to make their their uh, purchases for the coming season. And those buying trips took two and three weeks and they weren't very efficient. Uh, High Point got its name because it's the highest point on the railroad line. Mm -hmm. And uh, some very smart people said, look, let's help the buyers be more efficient and in the meantime help ourselves. So they invested in a, a building called the, the Southern Furniture Mart. It's right across the street from where we are today and started the High Point Market. And the idea was instead of these factories clearing a part of their dirty uh, uh, factory that we would go into to buildings and create showrooms, create nice displays, nice looking uh, displays for home furnishings. And so this market grew and it has grown and expanded for about 108 years. It's a fantastic thing. Yeah. And, and you do it twice a year and uh, it's, it, it almost doubles in, in, in population size. It, it must be surreal. It is surreal. Uh, we have to uh, use over 90 different hotels. Um, and there are not 90 hotels here. Oh, no, 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 no. We're, we're, we're in uh, three, three different counties when we, uh, when we provide uh, uh, hotels and then subsequent uh, free transportation for the buyers. It's not easy to work. Uh, convention centers around the world are wonderful things. Uh, it's, a, it's a central location. People come and walk up and down aisles and, 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 um, and do, their, do their business that way. Because home furnishings are so, are so large, and because the uh, buyers the uh, the buyers want to see them in what we call vignettes in in in, in um, settings, uh, the exhibitors have chosen to use showrooms, and they want to uh, the, the expense of moving in and out of a showroom is very very high, so they they lease these showrooms for all year long, and they use them twice a year, and uh, it's proven to be a very efficient and effective way for the for the buyers to see the product. But because the market's become so successful, we've grown into about 140 different buildings it's a 13 square block area it's a very different kind of a trade show it's some uh, I've I've never seen any trade show like this I've been to European shows I've been to Asian shows uh, I've I've been to, to uh, shows that have multiple buildings but they're, they're usually connected uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of buildings here that are not connected you have to take a bus to get from point yeah, A to point yeah. B so. 
And, and of course, uh, a lot of uh, trading is going on, but also some some speakers talking about uh, furniture. Or well, business. Y- yes, both, both. The industry, uh, our our tr- our industry has suffered dramatically. We've seen five thousand retail establishments go out of business in the last five to seven years and so uh we and and in that period of time we've seen a real rise in the number of designers so we call both a designer and a and a a retailer uh, a buyer but we differentiate them between a stocking buyer that is somebody who keeps inventory and a non-stocking buyer that would be a designer a, a, a architect a stager people like that but they both have a financial impact on the exhibitor so we try to recruit people uh, from those various buying categories they come they work the market it's important for the designer oftentimes they have to be recertified by their state or their local body so we the, the we and the exhibitors provide education that gives them continuous continuing education credit. A lot of the exhibitors have hospitality. There are uh, general interest kind of uh, programming. So there, (coughs) pardon me, there's a lot going on. People come from all over the world. Do you, do you know how many countries are represented during the market? Um, we use about 103 as our moving average, if you will. It'll go up and down depending on the market or de- depending on the the political climate. Um, when the Ebola hit, uh, outbreak hit in um, Africa, we had some issues there. We we get some African people coming, uh, but we had some issues there. Uh, when we've had um, Asian flu issues, sometimes that's been a problem. Uh, right now, the, the uh, problems between America and Russia are causing us to have some buyers not be able to get visas. So it will change from market to market, but we have well over a hundred companies, or countries rather, represented uh, on average. Yeah. Danes come as well? Oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. We have a proud tradition of uh, furniture design. Very proud, uh, and in fact, we have one one building that um, really just features contemporary furniture, which the Danes are very well known for. Um, and of course, there's a lot of other contemporary furniture exhibitors here. But um, yes, we 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 uh, we are very proud of the fact that we get a lot of European buyers. Although the European market has great trade shows too that. Uh, compete with us quite frankly how was the market uh, affected by the the recession you know it's been up and down um, we in, in in 2008 to 2009 we were at an all-time low uh, in modern uh, history uh, we recovered fairly well those those retailers that I just spoke about uh, the industry losing that really occurred as a result of the recession and people not buying homes and and, and uh, uh, money being difficult to obtain so it's been a, a difficult time but the industry's managed to claw itself back um, and and one of those good news bad news things you know with all the hurricanes and typhoons that are going on around the world um, uh, we feel terrible for the victims but assuming that they get uh, paid out from the insurance companies or that they try to re- to rebuild they need furniture yes they need furniture and you know it's a it's I say it with a heavy heart but they will need furniture and 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 hopefully over time when they get their lives together the industry will see some sales as, as a result you're listening to the radio vagabond podcast before we continue I'd like to remind you that I would be so thrilled if you shared it on Facebook or Twitter and now back to the show. Did the uh, North Carolina bathroom bill mean anything to the market? It absolutely did. Um, we were against it from the time that we first heard uh, about it. Um, we received lots of complaints. Um, as an industry, we have been extremely welcoming from the beginning. We've never had any problems at all. Um, and, but the, the, the industry suffered as a result. The market suffered. Uh, we lost some business opportunities. Um, Adidas turned us down. Uh, we, you know, it had nothing to do with the home furnishings industry, but they were looking to come to Guilford County with a distribution center. We lost that. Um, so there was a real loss of business in the state of North Carolina as a result. 
result of that. Um, we worked very hard to reach out to all of our constituents and assure them that what the legislature did was not reflective of how this industry was, and most people were very understanding. But to this day, quite frankly, we have some it's buyers. A, it's a tough message. Yes, it is. And to this day, we have some buyers that won't, won't come, yeah. come back. But we hope that they understand that they're really penalizing good people who have products to, to sell who don't discriminate. Um, and so we're, we're, we're hopeful that over time the hurt and the pain will go away and we'll get everybody back. So what's next for the market in the coming decade? You know, that's a great question. We have seen huge uh, increase in e-commerce and it is, a, it is a real challenge for us as an organizing body. Um, because they will challenge buyers, it will see some additional shrinkage on the, the buying side. And it is a challenge to the supply chain. Um, exhibitors are not sure, you know, how to do their pricing. They're not sure how they can sell. The, it, there's a, a term of art called disintermediation, and we've seen trade shows in, in general disintermediated by the Internet. We've always felt that we were somewhat immune to that because our product was so big. We had to have trade shows. People had to come and come to trade shows. But as the consumer finds it less important to go and look and see and feel the product and more comfortable buying it online, we also fear that the, the trade buyers may feel that way too. So they may not feel the need to come to the market as regularly. That's a problem. And then also just the way that the product is distributed where you would have intermediaries like an Amazon um, who, are, who are developing a separate business to sell to the trade buyer um, that, that maybe some of these trade buyers won't come to the market because they'll, they'll be able to, to buy it from, from Amazon. So the industry is really being challenged from a pricing and a distribution standpoint, and, and they've got to work it out. When I was in North Carolina, I also went into the furniture shop just outside of High Point called Furniture Land South. Can, do, do you work here? I do. Somebody told me you need to go in here, so here I am. I've just been walking around. <laughs> getting myself out of breath. Yeah. Is this that because that's what my friend told me that this is the biggest furniture store in the world? Is it that, is. It is it the is. biggest in the world. Mm -hmm. It's one. It's 1.3 million square feet of selling space. Wow. Yeah. Is that bigger than the biggest IKEA in the world? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. oh, because we have a because we one have in three my buildings. hometown in Denmark. That's right. It's just three it's buildings. the entire campus. Oh. So that's why they include all of it. Totally impressive. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. I have the feeling, I, I, of course, obviously, I don't know much about the furniture industry, but I have the feeling that this is so different from IKEA. Uh, so they're not represented here, are they? Uh, they do come. Um, they. Uh, we have people that supply them. Um, that that are here exhibiting, uh, whether they some admit it, some don't. Um, uh, but uh, you know, they are a wonderful company. They have a real place in our market. Um, but it, you know, it it represents a segment of the marketplace. Yeah, that they're, they're so huge that they sort of is a, an industry of their own, I guess. Very, very much so. Yeah, yeah, very, very much so. We have one of the, our exhibitors who just purchased a company uh, that was in Romania that was supplying IKEA. So, um, you, you know, they demand a great deal of attention to detail. They demand some very fine, fine pricing. And uh, so it changes the face of manufacturing and distribution. We're on the seventh floor of a of a building, and and this whole floor is, is you and your staff, uh, and and you work all year round uh, planning this. Uh, am I right? Yes, yes. We we are a, a, a reasonably small organization. We get funding from various sources, both the industry as well as various uh, as the city and the state and the the county. We're only uh, eight full time people, um, but during market between our our contractors and those people that we hire on a contract basis we have probably 500 people that work for us so uh, we do a, a lot of planning year-round sometimes we're planning two two markets out um, and it really does keep us busy for most people they don't understand that but a market of this size this degree of, in, of intricacy requires a, a 12-month commitment And we're only a few weeks away from from the next one, and uh, and I'm so appreciating that you you take the time to uh, to to see me because 
you must be getting very busy right now. Yeah, we are. We are. And my colleagues, especially uh, in terms of reaching out to buyers and to exhibitors who, uh, you know, we have some very creative people that are working in this in this business. We wish some of them were a little better organized because a lot of them are last minute. So <laughs> it, it becomes very hectic yeah. about a month out. You know? oh. <laughs> and, and, and you must... We've been through this six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, it, this is so interesting. I'm so sorry I can't be here during the market. I would love to have seen it, seen the difference. But uh, I have to I have to leave in uh, in a few weeks, so I'll I'll miss it. But hopefully, I can get back uh, and, and and see it at some point. Well, please come back. We'd love to have you, and I'm sure your listeners would love your observations about the market. Thank you so much, Tom. That was almost it for this episode, but stick around. In a minute, you can hear a bit of next week's drama when I get pulled over by the police. But before that, let me remind you that I would be so thrilled if you would give me some stars in Apple Podcast or in your podcast app. And if you have a few minutes, please write a few lines in a review. It helps other people find this podcast. You can reach me on mail if you have any feedback or questions or tips for me on what to see and who to talk to when I get to a new destination. I promise that I'll answer any email I get on mail at theradiovagabond.com. You can follow me real time, where I am right now, on the official Facebook page, facebook.com slash palaradiovagabond, and on Instagram and Twitter as Radio Vagabond. Find all these links at theradiovagabond.com where you can also see a lot of pictures, like a few pictures from the world's biggest furniture store. Next week, you can hear what happened when I was driving Davina's car and suddenly was pulled over by the police. How you doing, sir? I'm good. Hey. Somebody late for work? No? Yeah. Stop you guys for speeding in school zone here. Oh. Speeding in a school zone? Ugh. Not my proudest moment. My name is Palabo. See ya. <laughs>